we want to find the value of c that's greater than zero, such that the area of the region enclosed by the parabola is y equals x squared minus c squared, and y equals c squared minus x squared is 50. So for a quick review, if we want to find the area bounded by two curves given by g of x and f of x, where g of x is less than or equal to f of x, we take the integral of f of x minus g of x, integrated with respect to x from a to b, where f must be the top function and g must be the bottom function. And the values of a and b would be the x-coordinates of the points of intersections of the two curves. So going back to our example, notice how these two functions would be symmetrical across the x-axis and the points of intersection would be along the x-axis or the x-intercepts where the x-intercept on the left would be negative c and on the right we'd have positive c. But just in case we didn't recognize this, we can always find the x-coordinates of these points of intersection by setting these two functions equal to each other. So let's go ahead and show that. We would have x squared minus c squared equals c squared minus x squared. So if we added x squared to both sides, that would give us 2x squared minus c squared equals c squared. And then adding c squared to both sides, we'd have 2x squared equals 2c squared. Dividing both sides by 2, we have x squared equals c squared. And now solving for x, we would take the square root of both sides. We would have two solutions here. We'd have x equals negative c, x equals positive c. So these are the x-coordinates of the points of intersection of our two quadratic functions, which would be here and here. So these would be our limits of integration, which means the area bounded by these two functions must be equal to the integral of Again, we'd have f of x minus g of x, where f of x has to be the top function. And notice how this function here, the blue function, opens down, which means the leading coefficient would have to be negative. So this must be the graph of y equals c squared minus x squared. So we'd have c squared minus x squared minus the bottom function, which notice how opens upward. So the leading coefficient is positive, so we'd have x squared minus c squared. And we're integrating from negative c to positive c. And this must equal the given value of 50. Notice how because of the symmetry, we could integrate from zero to c and set that integral to 25 rather than 50. But let's go ahead and keep it in this form. So for the next step, we'll simplify the integrand function. So notice here we have c squared minus negative c squared, that'd be positive 2c squared. And then we have negative x squared minus x squared, so that's minus 2x squared. Next we'll find the antiderivative. Let's do this on the next slide. When we integrate 2c squared with respect to x, 2c squared's a constant, so we would have 2c squared x and then minus two times x to the third divided by three. The minutes of integration are from negative c to positive c, and this still equals 50. So now we'll substitute c for x. So we'd have two c squared times c, that'd be two c cubed. And here when we substitute c for x, we would have negative two thirds c cubed. And then minus, when x is negative c, here we'd have negative two c cubed. And here we'd have negative two thirds times negative c cubed, that's plus two thirds c cubed, and this equals 50. So here we have two c cubed, and this would be plus two c cubed, that's four c cubed. And we have negative two thirds c cubed minus two thirds c cubed, that'd be minus four thirds c cubed equals 50. Let's obtain a common denominator here, which would be three. Multiply this by three over three. So notice how the denominator is three. And we have 12 c cubed minus four c cubed, that's eight c cubed equals 50. To solve this for c cubed, we'd multiply by the reciprocal of eight thirds, which would be three eighths.
So we have C cubed equals 150 eighths. And now we'll take the cube root of both sides. So this gives us C equals, notice our denominator would be the cube root of eight, which is two. And the cube root of 150 does not simplify. So this is the value of C that we're looking for. C would be exactly the cube root of 150 divided by two. But let's also get a decimal approximation. The cube root, we can press math option four, and then 150, right arrow, divided by two, and enter. So it's approximately 2.6566. Just keep in mind, unless the homework does say to round, we should enter the exact value of the cubit of 150 divided by two. I hope you found this helpful.